So we have arc versus arc. What's the difference? One is capital and one is lowercase. And that's not an, a mistake. That is um, for real. Capital arc means something different than lowercase arc. So the lowercase arc sine arc cosine arc tangent etc is the same as the sine inverse the cosine inverse and the tangent inverse etc and when we do that when we're looking at lowercase a we are talking about all solutions so when we get a value an inverse sine what we're doing here inverse sine inverse cosine inverse tangent is I'm getting back to an angle measure and when I get back to that angle measure if the original problem was a, a lowercase a then we're talking about all solutions when we change it to the capital A arc sine arc cosine arc tangent we are still doing the inverse sine inverse cosine and inverse tangent but now this represents principal values and principal values are your calculator values so when we talk about principal values like I said we're going to be using your calculator it is your calculator values because your calculator is not capable it is programmed calculator values it is programmed to give you an answer it can't give you all the solutions it can't tell you plus 2 pi k it can't keep going around and around and around the unit circle it can give you one positive answer or one angle that represents a positive answer and one angle that represents a negative answer even though even if we were going one lap around the unit circle we would get two answers typically for positives and two answers for negatives um, just to make sure I'm not talking a foreign language to you remember when we did these I said when is the cosine equal to one half remember that okay and so we would say that happens in the pi over three family and it happens in the first and the fourth quadrant so we would get two values that's our brains that's us thinking that's us talking through this if you plug this in your calculator it's asking you to find what the angle is this would be the cosine inverse of 1 over 2 if you're in radians most of your calculators won't even give you pi over 3 as an answer it'll give you some decimal equivalent to it so it's something like a little bit over 1 if you're in degrees it's going to give you a degree answer and so I told you guys to put your calculators in degrees and this gives you one answer and that answer is 60 degrees because that is the degree equivalent to pi over 3 but what about the other answer or what about all the other answers that are possible how do we figure those out how can we work through those well we're going to have to use that concept that we used in the past and that is if I want to move into the third quadrant or into the um, third sorry into the second or into the third or back into the fourth with my principal value I would do pi minus and pi plus and two pi minus when I was in radians but now I'm going to work with degrees this would be 180 minus the angle 180 plus the angle and 
360 minus the angle. That's how I'm going to work around the unit circle with my degrees when I am depending on a calculator to help me. So let's talk about the calculator values for a little bit. And it depends on which trig function you use. Because along around the quadrants, the cosine is positive in the first quadrant, but negative in the second quadrant. The principal values for the cosine are going to be, if it's positive, it'll give you a first quadrant answer. If it's negative, it'll give you a second quadrant answer. But the cosine is, or sorry, but the sine is positive in the first and positive in the second, a second quadrant answer for sine isn't going to be, it can't be a negative, it's not going to be, it's not going to result in a second quadrant answer when you do sine. So it has to grab its values from the fourth quadrant, because that's where the sine is uh, its first negative value, okay? So all of this is like blah, 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 what is she talking about? Well, I'm just trying to prep you or warn you of what your answers are going to look like when we start to solve. And it can get kind of confusing. And so what I recommend is that when we work through our solving with our principal values, we make everything absolute value and then figure out our quadrants from there. So we always only put in a positive value even if it is negative, so I'm going to scan down here and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Even if it is negative, I'm going to solve for a positive value, get the angle, and then go back to finding, using that as a reference angle to get to the quadrant that I want to. Okay? So I'm just going to um, draw out what I was saying again here. Um, if I want principal values for cosine, my principal values for cosine will fall between 0 and 180 degrees. This is for cosine, its counterpart secant, and its uh, other where cosine is the lead cotangent. When I'm finding the principal values or solving for the rest of the trig functions, its principal values will fall between negative 90 and 90. I should put theta for that because that's what I used before. And again, it has to do with the fact that the cosine is positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second quadrant, so that's where it's going to get its positive and negative values from. The sine is positive in the first quadrant and negative in the fourth quadrant, so that's where it's going to get its principal values from. Okay? Again, this is just interpreting your calculator. We're going to refer to this shortly. But right now, let's get comfortable with the calculator. Let's make sure we're all in degrees, and let's see if we can figure out how to solve all these. So I'm going to grab my calculator. Some of them are pretty basic. Most of us on our calculator have sine, cosine, and tangent. Some of the fancier calculators, the TI, the graphing calculators, you'll also have a key for secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So you're pretty lucky you don't have to do too much thinking. You can just plug everything in exactly as it appears. The rest of us, if we have something other than sine, cosine, and tangent given, we're going to have to work with reciprocals because they're reciprocal functions. Okay? So the sine of 10, let's just make sure we're in degrees and make sure everybody can get this value. What is the sine of 10? Yeah. We usually go three or four decimals after. I'm just going to go with four decimals after. 
okay? You can truncate or round, it doesn't matter. Truncate means I just cut it off after the fourth decimal. Rounding means I look at what comes after and decide, decide if it goes up or down. Did I get, I have some people looking kind of like, what? are we okay? Did everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. Cosine, same thing. Now, because this is the cosine of 230 degrees, what I'm talking about up here with these positive and negatives is... If I move out of the first quadrant, and in degrees, the first quadrant is between 0 and 90 degrees. In the second quadrant, it's 90 to 180. In the third quadrant, it is 180 up to 270. Are you okay with that? If I am going to get the cosine or take the cosine of 230 degrees, it is going to be a third quadrant value. And so if done correctly, it should come up as a negative value. So we can plug that in. Cosine of 230 degrees, I get my value, and I got negative, do you guys agree, negative 0.6421, okay? Leave that in your calculator. Don't clear it out. If you did already, go back to it. And I want you to take the cosine inverse of this, because how this works is, if I take the cosine of an angle, I get a ratio. If I take the inverse of it, I should get back to that angle. So if I do second cosine, instead of memorizing it, we all have a little answer key on our calculator. Do you see that? Mine's above the negative. I do second answer. It'll transfer that and answer right in there for me. I don't even have to like write it down or repeat it. So if I, whatever the last answer was that it had, then I hit enter. Did I get 230 degrees? No. Because, remember, the cosine is negative in the second and in the third. Your calculator can give you the answer if you type the quadrant that you're in in it, but it can't give you back a different quadrant other than, because it's cosine, if it's positive, it'll give you a first quadrant answer. If it's negative, it'll give you a second quadrant answer. 130 is a second quadrant answer. This is where our math has to come into play. We can't just plug stuff in a calculator and be done. Okay, this is where we have to think. Yes? I just did that too, but why did you do that? Okay, so, so did you do cosine 230? Yeah. And you uh, got an answer? I did the exact same thing. Okay. It came out to do that, but I just like, don't know how I did that. Oh. So okay. Then, after that, like second then it's second cosine because that would be the inverse. Yeah. And then second answer will transfer that answer in for me and it'll give me my value. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my whole point on all this ramble, ramble, ramble is calculators are wonderful, but as a user, you need to know how to use it and you need to know how to interpret it. Okay. So 130 is the other angle that would produce the same ratio as the cosine. Remember when we were solving and we'd get two answers? Mm -hmm. So if my problem was here, the cosine of theta equals, I'm going to put that in here again, cosine of 230, negative 0.6428, I'll put that in. My two answers would be 230 and 130. Okay, those would be the values that would get that. This is me doing a little bit of work. This answer here is negative 0.6428. Okay. And so what, like I said, what we're going to do is learn how to interpret our calculators and learn how to pull our answers out of the calculators. That's what we're going to be working on today. Don't trust that the answer you get is the exact answer. Yeah. So the answer is... So, so this answer is negative 0.6428, yeah. But eventually we are going to need to do like theta. Yep, exactly, exactly. In fact, before you leave today, we're going to be doing the theta. Oh. And uh, it's, it, honestly, like I said, I'm talking a lot, but I'm going to show you an easy way around it, okay? That it, it should work okay, yes. You don't need to write this down, no. Uh uh. I was just sort of adding to really all you need is this answer right here, negative point six four seven eight. But but we are gonna get get to that down here. And I'll show you how to work. So you'll see those in action when we get down here. Okay, so let's do the tangent of negative seven hundred five. 
Negative 705 means I move backwards 705 degrees. And the tangent of negative 705, answer there is 0 0.2679. 0 0.2679. Again, yes? Because this is a probably equivalent to a pi over 12. Yeah, so your calculator gives you all the exact values. Okay. Do you remember when we did those pi over 12s and that was what we got? Yeah. Okay, now again, if I do the tangent inverse of this, I am not going to get negative 705. So if I do the tangent inverse of that, I'm going to go second tan of the answer I just found. It's going to give me 15 degrees, not even close to negative 705. But what that means is that 15 degrees and that 705 backwards must land in the same spot. So okay. So it would be theta 15, so be theta 15 yeah, yeah, we'll go through that in a little bit. Yeah, because we're going to do for one lap around, and I'll show you how to work through that. Okay? All right. Now, now how do I deal with these? How many of you have calculators that have secant, cosecant? Anybody? No? Okay. I think some of the graphing calculators too, but all right. So we'll all have to work through this. The It's not a difficult way, but secant is 1 over the cosine. So the value of this will be equivalent to 1 over the cosine of that number. Because that's the reciprocal. That's it. So I do 1 divided by the cosine of 786, and I will get my about 2.4585. Again, you can truncate, cut it off, or round that you could write this as 0.4586 if you wanted. I would accept both answers. Okay? This is a truncated answer as opposed to a rounded answer. So cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Another way that you can do this is you can do the sine of negative 274. And all of you have an inverse key on your calculator. Some of yours shows up as 1 over x. Some of yours shows up as x to the negative first. So another way to do this would be to take the sine of negative 274, get that answer, and hit my inverse key. So it will flip it using the inverse key. If I did it that way, I get 1.0024. Did anybody do it the other way? 1 divided by. Yep, so I used the inverse key. Did you get the same answer? What's that? Okay. Again, I'd get the same answer if I did 1 divided by the sine of negative 274. That's exactly what that key is. It just flips it for you. Yes? The inverse? Yeah, some of them show up oh, as x to the negative first. Some of them on your calculators are 1 over x. And it's not something that you have to use. You can get around it by doing the 1 over. Yep. You can do the 1 divided by. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Okay. Cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. I could also do the cosine of negative 540 divided by the sine of negative 540, but that's a lot of stuff to park, plug in my calculator. So what I'm going to do instead is 1 divided by the tangent of negative 540. Ooh. Did it happen to you? What does that mean? Because the tangent of 540 is 0. 540 would be on an axis. Yep. So this is undefined. Okay. No value at that spot. And you would see that if you did it tangent of negative 540 
hit equals, it gives you zero. When I try to do the inverse of zero, I get that same thing. Divide by zero, undefined, it's undefined at that location. Okay, now, again, I've done a lot of talking. But there's a way around having to think too much. And it uses what we did in our last few chapters. Just our knowledge of the quadrants and where things are positive and negative. Okay? So if I'm solving number 7, it wants me to figure out when is the cosine 0.44. And if I plug it in the calculator again, it's only going to give me one answer. But I want to go all the way around the circle, and so I should have potentially two answers, right? So when is the cosine 0.44? Well, I can figure that out by plugging the inverse in my calculator. So I do second cosine 0.44, and I will get an answer. About 63.9-ish. Are we okay with that? Oops, because you can't see because I don't have it in showing you. Sorry. So I would do the cosine inverse of 0.44. That'll give me my theta. So I'm going to call that 63.9-ish. Does it say nearest hundredth? So that means I have to do 63 point... Oh, it comes out to be 9, 0 anyways. Okay? So my... Theta is 63.90. All right, degrees, because we're in degrees. That's one answer. The cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, right? So positive in the first and the fourth. And so what I need to do is I need to use this as my reference angle and get into the fourth quadrant. So to get into the fourth quadrant, what's the rule? 360 minus the angle. So my other answer is 360 minus 63.90, or what? Minus? Three, oops. 360 minus 63.9, 296.1. I thought I heard you say 496. Sorry, I misunderstood you. So here's answer number one. Here's answer number two. Yes? Okay. So back when we were moving around the quadrants, when we were doing theta, when we would get into the second quadrant, we would do pi minus theta. Do you remember doing those? Pi plus theta, 2 pi minus theta. That's how I could move around. Now I'm in degrees, so I'm going to be working off the degrees. So it's 180 minus theta to get in the second, 180 plus theta in the third, 360 minus theta in the fourth. Good question. Yep. Okay? All right. Because cosine is always positive in the first and the fourth quadrant, again, that goes back to how our quadrants are. Remember how it works? So we're using some of our knowledge from, from the past chapters. We're just going to be using a little bit of the calculator. And so I know that quadrant one is positive, positive. Quadrant two is negative, positive. Quadrant three is negative, negative. Quadrant four is positive, negative. And I know that it still goes in the order of cosine, first, sine, second. Okay? Yes? If I am trying to find an angle, which is what this is here, this, th if that's my variable, then I know I have to use the inverse. I'm given a ratio and I need to go back to the angle. So if they're asking me to solve for theta, find theta, you'll be using an inverse key all the time. So in this whole section, it'll use an inverse key. Okay? All right. So let's do sine. When is the sine positive? When is the sine positive? First and second. Great. So I'm going to use my calculator to get my first answer. So second sine gives me the sine inverse of 0.78. I get 51.26 degrees. 
So theta is 51.26 degrees. That's my first quadrant answer. To get into the second quadrant, I go up to this picture again. I do 180 minus theta. And I will get... Hundred twenty-eight point seven four. Yes. And what are the like things so up here? Um. So the things up here are just to let you know if I put a if I do a cosine inverse, secant inverse, cotangent inverse. If my ratio is positive, it'll give me a first quadrant answer. If my ratio is negative, it'll give me a second quadrant answer. So I'll I'll talk to that when we get to about that when we get to the negative values and you'll see what I what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Because I used my calculator, I plugged in sine inverse of 0.78. And my calculator, if the ratio is positive, will only give me a po it'll only give me a first quadrant answer. That's all my calculator is capable to do. That's all it's been programmed to do. So I know if it's positive, it's going to give me a first quadrant answer. Okay? Yes. So the variance here, like, when you show the 180 minus mm -hmm. uh, theta, does yep. that mean, like, because it's going from, like, the second quadrant toward the first quadrant? Because I'm going from that axis, yep, in the direction into the second quadrant. That's why I chose 180 oh. minus if I wanted to go into the third, I would be 180 plus. What if you wanted to go into the first? I, first, it'll give me that answer all the time. Yeah. If it's positive, it'll give me that answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it all depends on, goes back to what we did in the last chapter, and that is, when is the cosine positive? It's positive in the first and the fourth. When is the sine positive in the first and the second? When is the tangent positive? First and the third, yep. So I want my answer for number nine to be the first and the third, okay? So my calculator will give me the first answer automatically. Second tan, plug that in, 0.33. It's going to give me an angle that falls between 0 and 90. What do I get? 18.26. So the tangent inverse of 0.33 gives me 18.26. That's theta. Okay? Now I need to get to the third quadrant. How do I do it? One. Yep. So I would have 196, no, 198.26, yes? Did I do okay? So those are my two solutions. Okay, now we got used to the positives, right? The negatives are tough. Yeah, the negatives are sort of a hassle, and I'll tell you why. I want my answers to be between 0 and 360. That's what it told me. Find your answers between 0 and 360. But if I put in an inverse sign that's negative, it's going to give me a backwards fourth quadrant answer. So if I plug in the sine inverse, oops, second sine of, in this case, negative 0.53, the answer it spits out is not even in the range of possible answers. So I have to work around that. Yeah. Okay. How do I work around that? I personally think the easiest way to do it is treat everything as an absolute value when you solve, but look at the negative when you get your answer. Okay. What do I mean by that? When is the sign negative? Third 
and fourth quadrants. When I plug in the sine inverse of 0.53, I'm plugging in the positive because I don't want to mess with the negative. If I plug in the negative, it's not even going to give me an answer that's in my zone. So if I plug in the sine inverse, second sine of 0.53, it will give me my reference angle. So this is about 32.01. Is that a third quadrant angle? Is it a fourth quadrant angle? How can I make that a third quadrant and a fourth quadrant angle? I go back over here and think about these values. How do I move around the circle? So I'll take that and I will do 180 plus 32.01. That gives me 212.01. Anybody agree? And I will do 360 minus 32.01. And that should give me 328, note 27.99. Okay. And so those are my two answers. So again, we need to know how to work the calculator in our favor to get the answers that we are looking for. And if I would plug this in, the sine, the sine of 212.01, I should get a decimal that's very close to negative 0.53. Do I? Yeah. If I plug in the sine, of 327.99, I should get a decimal very close to negative 0.53. Do I? Yes. So I have to kind of work the system to make the calculator work for me. Yes. Can you do that with like every problem Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can. Okay? All right. So again, the negatives are tricky because they're not going to give us the nice answer. So my suggestion is take the absolute value of that when you solve, but know where your answer needs to be. So when is the cosine negative? Second and third. So I'm going to do the cosine inverse of 0.51. I make it positive so that I get a nice first quadrant answer. So co second cosine of 0.51, I get a nice positive answer. I'm going to be working with 59.34. I rounded that time. You can round, you can truncate, I don't care what you do. I'll be able to figure it out on your paper. But now I need to get this angle into the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So how do I do second quadrant? 180 minus... which I get 20.66, okay? And how do I do the third quadrant? 180 plus. And we get for that one 239.34. Does that seem reasonable? Anybody agree? Okay, good. So those are my two answers. Again, you, you have to work the calculator. All right, let's do our last one. Talk me through it. Can somebody tell me what quadrants I'm interested in? Second and, second and fourth. Why? Because that's when the tangent is negative. What am I going to plug in? Tan inverse of positive 6.5. I'll take the absolute value of that so I can get the first quadrant angle and I can work around the calculator. So tan inverse 6.5, 81.25. I call this my reference angle. 
This is the angle I'm going to work with to get into the second and the fourth. So just like when we were doing our negatives before, I thought of that as an afterthought. When is the cosine one half? When is it negative? So that I could figure out where I go. Same concept here, but with degrees. So what is my second quadrant value? I think I heard 98.75. Good. Okay. What is my fourth quadrant value? Good. 278.75. Excellent. And again, if you want to check, two things that you need to look for. First of all, do both of my answers fall between 0 and 360 degrees? Yep. Then that's a good thing. And then I could do the tangent of 98.75 and the tangent of 278.75, and I should get really close to negative 6.5. So you can check your work as you go, okay? All right, so you have your homework. Evens or odds on 5.1. Just sort of getting comfortable with your calculator. If you have any questions about anything, please just let me know. Um, tomorrow we're going to get into law of sines, law of cosines, more calculator work. Okay? Yes. Yeah.